Okay, this is a uh, Christmas tabletop display I made about six years ago. Um, the reindeer cut from Doug fur, standard 2x4 pattern, you can find anywhere on the internet. I uh, turned the Christmas trees and the snowman, and this uh, sleigh was made out of um, pine dunnage I glued together to get size to match the reindeer, more or less. And uh, I've had a few people now and then ask me for plans for the sleigh, so I decided that I would make it um, a more dimensional lumber instead of odd wood glued together. So this is cut from a 4x4, four four, 8 inches long. Um, four by four, three and a half by three and a half here in America after it's been finished. And I made the, like the little cargo area a little bit uh, wider. It's almost the same length as this one, but narrower and smaller. And uh, I've got plans on that, and I'm going to include with the plans the reindeer I cut down to fit the size of the pattern a little bit. Show how I do that. There's two uh, separate videos, one on the reindeer and one on the sleigh. And I'll get started on the sleigh pattern right now and show you how I did that. I need one piece at eight inches. three pieces of six inches. You can get away with two pieces of six inches, but I like spares. I'll explain more later. See how these knots work out. Eh, let me trim that knot out. <clears throat> these are the three patterns I use to uh, make the sleigh. This is the outside pattern. This is the inside pattern. And these are for the rails. Now, I've already drawn the pattern out on the rails. I don't know whether you can see that or not. And when I want to I put them together with uh, double stick tape, that way when I screw up, I can screw up both rails at once. And in order to make sure I get them lined up, I use this little device here and put the double stick tape in between the parts that are going to be cut out and then I make sure I line everything up and push it down it gets me fairly close to square and straight or at least they match each other I also use this to square up the pattern with the blank 4x4's Four are notoriously not level and flat so I've done some pre-sanding on this and um, it makes it a little flatter not perfectly square it's hard to do with dimensional lumber and this has shrunk down because it's had a while to sit out under out of the weather a little bit so it's three and three eighths by three and three eighths instead of three and a half by three and a half and I'm trying to avoid I don't know whether you can see it or not this pitch pocket so I'm going to live with the little knot here so I'm going to go ahead and put that there and draw my pattern out Okay, on to the bandsaw. I've got my Carter stabilizer. I got a 14 TPI, 3 16 Olsen blade, and uh, we'll get started.
Okay, this is the inside pattern, and I've drawn that onto the blank. And this piece and that piece will be cut out. These pieces will be notched out for the sleigh rails to fit into, depending on what kind of blank you use. I'm just using um, scrap um, quarter inch, which is less than quarter inch, as you know, um, for the rails. So you only want to notch these for whatever you're going to use for rails, only go to that deep. And then you glue the outside back on and do whatever sanding you want to do. And then uh, that's, that's how the rails get attached.
when you're chiseling this out you have to be kind of gentle and easy about it. you have a very thin layer there between the bottom of the cargo hold and your chiseled out point for your uh, sleigh support sled supports to go into and um, so you want to be gentle you want to be careful you don't want to sit there and go in this way real hard you'll break things out you don't want to break out so I work it back and forth as you saw as gentle as can be I'm going to go ahead and do the rest off camera I'm going to glue the sled runners on and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that try not to make too big of a mess here You don't have to worry about getting too much glue on the outside of this is because you're going to be covering that up anyway. You just might want to keep it down so that it doesn't uh, make little lumps. Sometimes you might want to let this soak a little bit. That's kind of soaking in a little bit right there. Make sure that uh, you still have enough on there to uh, be able to grab your um, runners and their support. Now put these in. In order to try to make sure that everything's level, I put them on this block and push them down. And then clamp them. And that'll keep everything evenly spaced. I give that 20 minutes to dry, and then I'll glue the sides back on. Okay, I pulled this out of the clamps. I give it about 30 minutes to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and glue one side on at a time. I give it about another 20, 30 minutes, and then glue the other side on. It's better than trying to fight them both and line them up at once by one slip in this way and one slip in the other way. So that's how I do it. And these are going to have, uh, they're going to line up mostly, but you're going to have some issues because you have wood movement. When you start taking off a thin piece of wood, and then this is thick, and you take out these blocks, things shrink and expand and move a little bit different than um, from each other. So you've got to keep that in mind that you're just going to do the best you can and do the rest of your lineup by just sanding everything into place. Filling in all the little mistakes you made here and there along the way with either some uh, putty and uh, some glue and some sawdust or some putty, whatever you want to do. I always just use sawdust from the sanding and fill in the holes. Sometimes I use a regular glue. Sometimes I use the CA glue. These are filled in with CA glue back here and uh, sanding and uh, uh, save any cracks like that for the bottom because that most people aren't going to see that anyway and once you paint it they're going to see it even less so and or if you stain it or whatever you're going to do try to put most of your mistakes where people can't see it 
besides the closet and a dark spot, I mean. <laughs> Looks like I got most of it. I want to keep as much glue squeeze out as possible from happening. I'd kind of push it towards the center. Doesn't matter so much on these parts because that's going to uh, be an area you're going to sand out. Now I use my little spacer block again, but I put these two little boards between the sleigh runners space them apart like this clean up any other little spots this won't make it line up perfect but it'll help Like I said, you're going to have some movement, so it's not going to be anywhere near perfect anyway. I was wanting to bow out a little bit, so by putting a clamp top and bottom, I keep that in place. You got a really thin rail here with very little glue there, so I want to get it in place. Another spot right here is good to get. And then I got a little bit of separation right there because how thin that is. I'm going to have to put this clamp over just a little bit. Matter of fact, I'll just put it right there. I gotta free up another clamp, put it right here just to be on the safe side. Should be fine, but here we go. Okay. And I'll let that set for about uh, 20 30 minutes. And um, then I'll put on the other side. Gone ahead and glued on the other side. I've sanded everything smooth, so now it's just ready for um, painting or staining or however you want to finish it. Um, I was thinking about it though, and not everybody has a spindle sander, and they're going to have to use like a dowel with sandpaper wrapped around it to get this. So you might want to sand all your contours in place around here where the sleigh runners might get in the way if you don't have, um, like I put a, a three quarter inch uh, sanding belt on my 14 inch bandsaw and do this and the sleigh runners don't get in the way of that but if you don't have that they could get in the way so you might want to do all your contour sanding before you slice off these sides and um, that way when you glue them back on you can get them fairly well matched and only have a little touch up sanding left to do without having to do a lot of it around these edges and stuff like that so that was just an afterthought I had and one more afterthought is when I do these out of the 4x4s, I like the uh, 4x4s that have that curve on them all the way around. That works for me, but because I had some issues with this, I went ahead and shrunk the pattern down this way from 3 and 3 eighths to 3 and a quarter. Um, you might want to adjust the pattern up and down to suit you, but I think it gives a nice finished rounded over um, edge on the bottom and it's easier to contour everything in that way in my opinion you might want to you know shrink things down do a little differently but uh, I kinda like that uh, rounded over part 